Lauren Radcliffe. Yes. And so the obvious question. Harry Potter. Right. I've got a T. So I'm Radcliffe, oh, not Radcliffe. He's Radcliffe. He's Radcliffe. Okay. That much more rare. Much more rare. You are much more rare. <laughs> of course. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. And were you a fan of the books or the movies? or Books. Love yeah. Harry Potter. You do? Yeah. You're one of the people. I, I think I read the first three in one sitting when I was moving house when I was about 10 years Those old. Those are thick books. Wow. They had to move me from the sofa because it was the last thing they were putting into the removal van. I see. And I had to sit on a windowsill. So they orchestrated <laughs> their work around your reading habits. They did. Do you see what I did there? Uh, that was very good. All right. So work <laughs> orchestration, what do we need to know here? What are we talking about? So work orchestration is really our way of focusing the the human users on where we want them to focus. Mm. Really, it's, it's almost the backbone of our, our automated process. So we can go away and we can automate as many transactional things as we need however there's always this inherent need for people to control things sure um so what we really do with work orchestration is we give them a, a portal we give them a front end we give this, them somewhere to look um so that it works on kind of two ways really mm -hmm. number one is that they can see where their processes are. They're not having to go to multiple disparate systems to be able to pick out pieces of information. That's kind of going against what we want them to do because it all will end up taking the manual transactional work away from them and we'll end up pointing them to about four or five different systems to be able to monitor that because it's natural. You right. want to see what's happening. Right. Through a work orchestration system, we, we point them at one place. We can then show them everything that is critical that we need them to do mm -hmm. so as opposed to coming in in the morning think of your email inbox you've come in the morning you've got 100 new emails where do you start do you start top to bottom do you start bottom to top do you pick a few random ones out of the middle what we really do with work orchestration is we we prioritize things so we show them really where the highest value items are that we need a human to work on right so if there is an outage that is an exception and it's really high value, that's gonna come straight to the top, it'll be there in red. Yeah. So we're really focusing them mm -hmm. and it's where we need them to go and fix stuff. Got it. Now, I wanna to talk to you about ownership and creativity because you one of your answers in uh, one of the other <laughs> sessions was, you know, you appreciate the creativity. We know that folks want that ownership. How do you ensure that they still have that ownership? You're guiding them, but how do you ensure that they still have that ownership and the ability to be creative along with you know, what you're orchestrating for them? Um, so what we really do is we give them a dashboard within, within the work orchestration where they can see all of the automated processes that are running, how they are running, where they are. So a lot of obviously working in financial services, a lot of what we do is on kind of a cycle basis. Sure. So they can see where they are in the cycle, how they are, how they are tracking, whether they're on track, off track. It gives them that ownership mm -hmm. of these are still my processes. Um, and I think in terms of creativity, they, they still have all of the data they're available for them. Uh, they have to just, still do the work. They've That's still the, got to do they have the to creatively the, come up with the, the solution. The exceptions, yes. Yeah. Um, and in terms of data, we can put things like your your customer requests alongside transactional data, mm. um, so that they can see everything in one place. It's giving them that total picture, yeah. whilst moving away some of the i want to be able to push the button work sure yeah um so it's it's really just refocusing them all right so we've got ownership we've got creativity what are they saying back to you you know lauren comes in here in newcastle maybe goes to manila maybe goes to costa rica well, you know once you kind of show this dashboard and kind of can have them conceive of what is possible what then is the feedback they love it <laughs> <laughs> No, um, they. I think the fact for them, the the one concern that personally I see, and I think as as a team we see, is when we start a, a new process or we move into a new area. There's always that apprehension that 
we're going to automate all of this work and it's just going to disappear. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think when we build in that work orchestration, we'll build in that backbone, they they get the visibility, they get the transparency to what's happening. There's no more black box of automation. Right. Uh, they can see their data, they can, so we can, we can do some analytics in there and mm. we can also create new analytics, uh, new data for them. So for example, uh, if um, an item comes in, we're working it for 10 minutes, we can bring in all of that. So actually we're getting them to a, a better granularity of data in terms of what they are actually working on. Right. And it's a lot vis more visible as well, I think from a, a managerial perspective is you have a team of 10. Hmm. Now you can see exactly what they are working on and how much time they are spending on things. Um, it also feeds very well into our kind of our, our big data analytics as well in that we can see where the human pe well the humans are focusing mm -hmm. and so we can then again feed that back into our analytics yeah. to say what's next well, where the, is our upstream process broken yeah Th those new analytics that that's some of that that uh even that that team leader uh is seeing yeah. and this is the gray that you were talking about yes. and then redefining the black and white i, I uh mean to put you on the spot because <laughs> most folks will tell you i don't mean to put you on the spot they do they mean to put you on the spot <laughs> what uh what about redefining that black and white can you give an example of you know what you're looking at if something hasn't been redefined just yet, uh, maybe a new analytic that has uh, come to light based on uh, this work, you know, some of this change that uh, that we're pushing? Um, I, I think one example would be uh, a, a project that we've re recently implemented uh, looking at, um, it, it was implementing a, a work orchestration process. Uh, so again, it was it was very new. I I think I went in probably about fifty percent of the way through the the initial kind of sprint, mm -hmm. which was obviously sprint zero. It was looking at kind of how do we define this, um, and they had done all of those transactional pieces, yeah. but it was that. Th and we, we look to kind of integrate a work orchestration process through that. However, looking at that, we then found there was a whole other piece that had to happen before mm -hmm. based on, on cues, on logic, on how we're actually going to pull that data through that was, yes, added complexity for the work orchestration, but it really made the process work because without that and without how we pulled the data in in the right order and hitting the right deadlines, we were never going to hit that. So we kind of went into it thinking that the process was that big and yeah. we found that there was kind of another chunk on the front of it, which actually then made the whole thing flow better end to end. And that's what we like. And that's what I really like about the job is yeah. that we've got that flexibility. We can, we have a scope, but if something comes up and we think, oh, we could pull that in to actually make the end to end bigger, better, work more efficiently, we can do. There we go, redefining the black and white. Indeed. Lauren Radcliffe. <laughs> Thank you very much. With a T. With a T, and an E on the end. Oh. <laughs>